Good afternoon, noon, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, it's not really response to community feedback, the next balance update's been announced, so we'll call this response to the next balance update. Um, this was posted today on December 5th in the year 2016. First of all, thanks everyone for the talking over the weekend. We've reconsidered our changes as there were many great points which you all presented. Woo! I'm going to have to pat myself on the back for this one because these, like, a few of these are, uh, pretty much straight out of our last community feedback response video. And I'm very glad that, uh, Blizzard recognized, you know, as someone who plays the game a lot, uh, my biggest hope is for StarCraft to be a fun, dynamic game that doesn't really pigeonhole you into any one spot or another. So let's just go through the changes. We agree that Colossi upgrade might not be the best idea since the issue that they're trying to solve is Hydra Strength. Thank you for not turning this into some war. I mentioned in the last video, I thought it would be a really bad idea if we turn this into the Heart of the Swarm style race, where if you guys remember in Heart of the Swarm, Blizzard kind of went on a race to make every unit a little better, but all they ended up doing was buffing the speed of every single unit. Like almost almost every harass unit got a speed buff. Mutas, Metavacs, Phoenix, Oracles, Warp Prisms, like, you know. I'm not saying those were terrible changes because obviously they haven't broken the game, but like, we were about to we were about to start going into a range war in Legacy of the Void. I am very scared of a range war where we're just like, well, we made this unit have a lot of range, so let's just buff the other heavily ranged units, and eventually the game will completely rely on units just outranging everything, which, frankly, is a pretty silly way to go. So, uh, we agree with possibly reverting the Hydra range back to 6 and exploring a different option, such as increasing health or decreasing their cost. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? So, I'm glad they're listening. And the direction here would be to revert the change first, see how they work, and then discuss a buff where needed. I would just like to say that Hydralisks retain a lot of value still, even if their range is brought back to 6, simply because that speed boost uh, makes them almost as fast as Hellions. On creep, they are extremely good at defending. And I think one of the biggest issues with Hydralisk styles has been, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, mutas were f preferred also because of their ability to stop drops, pick off things like liberators, etc., etc., especially now that liberators don't do bonus damage versus light. So being able to use the Hydralisk better defensively from the speed boost is something they should keep. It helps the Roach Hydra, and I say Roach Hydra because it should not just be Hydra. Thankfully, if they go through with these changes, it will. you will need something else other than pure Hydralisk to win games, which sounds good to me. Um... So I love this change. Increasing their health makes sense. Put them up to 90 or 100. Nine, I would say at least, I would really hope Blizzard buffs the health to at least 90. And the reason why I'm going to say that is Liberators one-shot them, right? So I think it gives a little bit of counterplay. And then if the Terran player gets plus two or plus three, then the Libs go back to one-shotting them. And then at least it's like, you know, how often do Terran actually get air upgrades? You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to play mech, ground upgrades are better because... It's hard to play Air Terran versus Zerg. Um, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to tell you right now. You, you shouldn't try to play Air Terran versus Zerg. Ravens are still really good. Um, but we'll get into that later. Let's go over the rest of these issues here. So the, the Colossus thing, I'm glad they're not doing that because right now a lot of Protoss players are building Colossi and having a lot of success versus Terran with them. So you're actually going to break Terran versus Protoss. If Colossus suddenly did an extra like 30% damage versus Marines, considering that tvp is very evenly matched right now and people are using colossus that's bad that would actually in my opinion it would be game breaking so i'm really glad they decided to actually fix the problem rather than do the american thing where you just beat around the bush you know so we we got to the heart of the problem and that's awesome uh, by the way it's a funny discussion because a lot of people have tried to push back aggressively to me on this hydra's you know, trying to make them work is important, but Zerg was not hurting before this patch. We were not in a phase where Zerg players were like, guys, this game's unwinnable. So scaling this one thing back is actually not the end of the world because it's not like they needed this buff to get out of like a 20% win rate or something. Quantity of Protoss abilities. We agree with the foot feedback regarding the number of abilities on the Protoss side. We like to improve it. The goal here isn't to solve everything at once, but go in steps. So... Removing the Tempest's ability, it's not working out well. I mean, I think everybody agreed the Tempest's ability was pretty garbage, um, except for that one guy who never moves his army in one giant block and gets hit by it, you know, and everyone's like, oh my god, oh, why is it so crazy? But 
that one guy then quit. And it's never happened since. So increasing anti-ground range to 10 and also increasing anti-ground damage. Um, the Tempest doesn't really have a role in this game anymore. I don't know if Blizzard realizes this, but Carrier is so good. I can't think of a reason to build Tempests except versus battle cruisers, and the anti-ground buff doesn't help. Are Tempests having problems against ground units? I don't know. I think I think you need to make the Thor Oh, I don't want to get into this conversation. I think battle cruisers are the answer to Protoss in the air, but I don't know what you're trying to kill with Tempest on the ground that you want to even touch that. I guess set it to 10 range. I don't think it bothers or affects anybody. Um if you can, you'd rather get carriers, so it doesn't matter. Um, hmm. Small change to the immortal. This doesn't matter. There's a common uh, misconception amongst people on lower levels, especially I've noticed while streaming, where people are like, Yo, Nate, why do some streamers not turn off the Protoss barrier and manually target it like the Korean pros? I've cast so many games. Nobody turns off auto-cast on barrier. Just like people used to ask me, Nate, why do you leave your Cyclones with lock-on on auto-lock in the previous patch before they removed it? Like, why don't you turn off auto-lock? I'm sure Innovation does it. I'm like, Innovation doesn't turn off auto-lock. You guys don't understand how hard this game is. Nobody turns off auto-cast abilities. Almost nobody, at least. Most people just play around the game the best they can because manually doing abilities is actually really difficult. And that's one of the reasons why Hydras shouldn't have seven range now you can actually fight with real armies again. This is very important. The game has become really frustrating. When I made my response video to the Hydralisks last week, a lot of people, after my range demonstration, a lot of people were like, you know what, Nathan? That's bullcrap because the Hydralisk is countered by storm and disruptors. And I'm like, okay, how would you feel if you played Protoss or if you played Zerg and someone told you, hey, you can literally never beat a Protoss army without getting a Miracle Fungal and Blinding Cloud. That's it. Your Roaches, your Hydras, your Ravagers are useless. You actually must hit this massive spell to win the game. Because that's what you just told Protoss players. That's bullshit. So, I'm glad that we're moving away from that direction. Protoss players should not be required to juggle 20 spellcasters in order to play this game. I haven't, I've played like 3 Protoss players this week. Alright. Most of them are fed up with this. I hope this patch goes through very soon. Mech and Blinding Cloud. Well, this is literally straight out of my video. I mean, I've been sending feedback privately as well, but Blinding Cloud uh, is the biggest problem. Getting rid of Abduct would be a bad idea because the Viper is supposed to be able to pick apart armies. The Viper is not supposed to be able to suicide through Vikings, drop seven Blinding Clouds that last for 70 seconds, cumulatively speaking, and completely shut down an entire mech army for, you know, a ridiculous amount of time. So I'm glad that they want to reduce this. I'd like, honestly, I, I mean, the Viper's primary function should be picking units off, maybe using Parasitic Bomb, but it should not be spamming Blinding Clouds. Um, if this doesn't do enough, I'd like to see Blinding Cloud just raise to 125 energy so that one Viper can't use two. I think that ability is one of the strongest in the game, and it is one of the sole reasons why there's still no mech usage at the highest level versus zerg and when there is it's usually extremely turtly because it's almost impossible not to get hit by blinding cloud if you move out of your base and you're not turtle mode then the zerg player can pick when to fight you so if you want to leave your base you need to be able to siege up some of your tanks next to each other and if blinding cloud makes that cause you to instantly lose the game then that's a problem blinding cloud is in my opinion, the number one thing in Terran versus Zerg that is stopping Terran players from using um, from using mech. But uh, I don't even play mech anymore, so whatever. I'll wait for this patch, I guess. What does this mean for this week's bounce patch? Well, I wish they would release it tomorrow, but I guess it's important to let people get their words in. And uh, hopefully this patch comes out very soon because this is going to help bring mech into the fold for Terran versus Zerg. I will say that if this starts to go really well, I would like to consider further nerfs on both the Viper and the Raven. Just get rid of these mass spells that kill everything. At least the High Templar is like a stupidly vulnerable unit. At least the Infester is really low health, big fat thing that is armored and takes bonus damage from tanks. The Viper is extremely mobile. The Raven is extremely mobile. They both have disgusting range and an insane amount of abilities. 
those are two units that promote this weird weird stuff you know focus on stuff like abduct or maybe some type of seeker missile or auto turrets but not not on mass seeker not on pdd um so well i guess they fix a lot of pdd issues well that's it for this week's update um i love all of this i like it all i don't really think that the tempest is gonna have a role in this game anymore now that the carrier is actually good um, if you guys have been watching streams, my stream, any Proton stream, any Zerg stream, even some of the qualifiers for some of the online stuff, I mean, carriers are really good. Uh, carriers are much more fun to watch than Tempests. I don't think uh, you can argue that. Tempests are just very slow moving, long range, shoot things, and then they maybe die. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to do about the Tempest, but uh, that's what happens when you have a much more interesting unit that can also be built. The only reason why you'd build a Tempest is because carriers take too long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this response to the next balance update. I can't wait for this. And of course, I'll be streaming every day from noon to eight. So you guys can see this balance patch whenever it hits. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.